I recently had a subscriber request that I do a video on my essential cooking tools. And these are things that I use pretty much on a daily basis. Now I do want to let you know that my kitchen is very tiny. So I try to get by on just the very basic necessities in my kitchen. I don't have big appliances or anything like that. I have a bread machine and I have a couple other things that I really enjoy using. But most of my items are small. They can fit into a drawer. And I like to uh, say they're around the $10 range. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over what I use for mixers and whisk. Um, I have assorted whisk here. My favorite one to use um, is what you call like a gravy whisk or a bechamel whisk. And it's flat and it's a little bit rounded at the end, but it really is nice when you're trying to put together any kind of gravy or sauce. And you can get those on Amazon. Uh, I, the one with the brown handle, the wooden handle, I recently found that at Walmart. And I don't know that it'll last a long time. I've only had it for two weeks now, but I do want to just let you know that. Okay, and now my next item is basically a chopper. I think I've had this little system here for about 10 years. I have worn it out. As a matter of fact, it had another piece with it that's broken. So, but the little chopper here is great. Now, I don't have a food processor, but I get by with using this chopper. It does exactly what I need it to do in certain circumstances. And then the other piece here is an electric carving knife, which I use a lot. I don't know how much longer this is going to last either because I use it for cutting my loaf bread that I use um, whenever I make uh, bread in my bread machine. Now the other piece here that you see now is a, what you call a stick blender. I think some people may refer to it as an immersion blender. I love this for different kind of things, salad dressings and um, just pureeing like soups and that kind of thing when I'm making it it's really has come in handy and I never really thought that I would need something like this until I had it it was uh with the it was the piece that actually broke with the chopper and the electric knife and I actually never even really used it and then one day I started using it and I thought wow this is great and so then I eventually broke it so I had to replace it so um I think those run around 20 25 dollars so I don't have a stand mixer you may see a lot of people that do uh baking videos as on YouTube they have the stand mixer I just use this little hand mixer it does the job just perfectly fine and so I like to use that and then this right here is just a little pastry cutter you might call it a pastry blender I like this one with the really hard um, edges on it there before I had this I used to use two forks together to cut in like butter into flour when I was making biscuits or something but this is really nice and um, I don't like anything that's too flimsy on the end because it won't cut it very well and now we'll look at graters I have actually done a video on how I like to use graters and the ones that I have in my kitchen and I'll leave a link to that if you'd like to check it out it's a little more in depth of course it is uh, just how I use my graters it's not anything you know by the book and it's just the way I like to use them and I was just trying to show you in that video how I like to use them but basically here I have on the right is a microplane um, little grater here and I use that for about 10 years there it's a really good brand if you can find microplane that's great it really was sharp for a very long time and I just used it for a lot of different things and then I guess over the past few years I've um, upgraded some of my graters to the red handled here that you see I use that one for hard cheeses or frozen citrus rinds um, a lot of different things I'll use the red handled one for it's more of a coarse grating and then I reserve my black handled one here for citrus only I like to use that one just for citrus because I don't want it to get dull and it does such a nice job with uh, any kind of uh, citrus peel that I'm trying to grate into it might be frostings or cookie dough or whatever it is and then of course we probably all have a box grater and I love to use that. That's the one I started out with when I was very young. So, and then this right here is something that I happen to find at one of those little stores like a Tuesday morning or Ross or something. And it's a nutmeg grater. And it works great because I can always store my little pieces of whole nutmeg underneath it. So I've enjoyed using that. But of course, that's really not an essential item for the kitchen. I can use my box grater for nutmeg just as easily as I can that little nutmeg uh, container. Okay, so now here are grinders. 
and I think a pepper mill is essential. Um, that is just a wonderful thing to have around. The flavor of fresh ground pepper is wonderful. And um, this is a really big one because I figured out pretty early on that it's a pain to refill those things all the time. And I use it all the time. I don't know if it's just because I'm a southerner and we love a lot of black pepper and just about everything we cook or what. But I just, uh, it just seemed to go be empty all the time so a really big one is is really nice to have and then this right here is really a coffee grinder some people might call it a spice grinder um and over the years they've made them where the um little compartment detaches from the base unit so you can wash it and that's great i think you can get those at walmart for about 15 dollars now or something like that so love my little spice grinder i use it for all kind of things i like to make powders um, and so when I dehydrate like peppers or something like that, I can just easily pulse those down and I have an instant powder. So those are great. So now let's take a look at spatulas and spoons. I'm a big fan of using a rubber spatula with a very flexible end. You know, sometimes those things can be a little bit hard and that's useless for me. I can use a wooden spoon if I want a hard spatula. So I always feel the tips of those and make sure they're nice and flexible. And then the second thing I like to look for is does that tip remove from the handle? And if it does, you know, you'll probably find that's a little bit of a less expensive spatula. Make sure, though, if you have spatulas like that, it's a good idea to just kind of remove that end and when you wash it in the dishwasher. Because if you don't remove it, it kind of can build up mildew or mold in there. I don't know, something grows in there if you, <laughs> if you don't remove it. So uh, the gray one here on the right is uh, molded to the handle. I really like that one a lot. Um, I can do a lot of uh, really good... Uh, mixing with it and with the other ones sometimes they'll even slide off the tip end if I'm not you know real careful with it um, and also if your tip removes and it's a wooden spoon it's really hard to get that clean because the wood is more porous than the plastic and some things will still grow down in there unless you let it dry really good so I prefer not to get a spatula that has a wooden handle with a removable end Okay, and then right here I have a couple of wooden spoons, which is, those are my favorite uh, utensils really to cook with, or wooden spoons on a cast iron skillet. That's probably all I really need. I'm not even including a cast iron skillet in this, but that's my favorite thing to cook in. <laughs> um, but wooden spoons are great. I like the spoons. They have a kind of a, uh, you could probably almost call it more of a spatula. They have the flat edge on the very end. And then this big one here is something I've enjoyed a lot. And it's like a pancake spatula. It's really big because I like to make big pancakes. But it's come in handy for French toast or anything that's been really big that I've had to flip. It just does the job perfectly. And now we'll look at knives and peelers and shears. Now knives, I have a lot of different knives. Um, they're not all real expensive knives, but I do have a couple of nice ones that I like to be able to sharpen. And so I have a 10 inch chef's knife here at the bottom, and then I have a little paring knife there. And then the top one's actually not a very expensive knife at all. It's just one of those, you know how, I think when you <laughs> watch TV, you know how they'll, they used to have those commercials where they would cut a tin can in half or something. It's like one of those. And I like to use that one for breads. And so it's a nice serrated knife and I use it for a lot of different things actually. Uh, the brands that I have here are Wusthof and uh, Hink Hinkles, I think is the name of it. I also need to have something to keep my good knives sharp. So, you know, your knives are not really going to do you much good if they're dull. And also, you are going to be more likely to cut yourself with a dull knife than with a sharp knife. Because when you're cutting, you want it to do its job and you don't want it slipping around. And you'll have better control if it's sharp, okay? So, this right here is a honing steel. And you can use that. Um, I don't know, I think I use that about on a weekly basis just to kind of keep my knives sharp. And then below at the bottom here is something I bought within the last year and it is really nice. I really enjoyed using it. It's a knife sharpener. Um, there are two ways that you can sharpen your knife. One, if your blade is really dull and the other one is just um, on just a regular basis to kind of keep it sharp. And I'll leave a link in the description area if you'd like to check that out. But it's done a really good job for me. I've been real happy with the results of that. And then, of course, you know, you just need some kitchen shears. The one on the right, I think I got at Dollar Tree. The other one is broken, and it's on its last leg, too. I've had that one forever. So um, those are 
I'll use those all the time. That's something I probably need to have about at least four or five in my kitchen. <laughs> okay, and now just vegetable peelers. And I honestly like the little ones you can get like at Dollar Tree that are on the left here. The white handled and then just the metal handle. Those work great for me. Um, the yellow one here is good. It is uh, really sharp. Uh, the, the reason why I was saying I like the other ones is because I can change those out pretty regularly. But this other one, I'm actually really enjoying it too, the yellow one, because it's real sharp. I mean, it hasn't really dulled on me yet. So I think it has a little bit of a better blade. And then the um, Julienne vegetable peeler, I've actually done a video on that too, specifically on that to show you the different ways I've used it. So I'll leave you a link for that if you'd like to check it out. I've done a, a video on this as well. This is for uh, deveining your shrimp. So it's a shrimp deveiner. I use that a lot. And a lot of people don't like to use something like this. They'll just use a knife to devein the shrimp. But once you get used to using this, it is so much faster than using a knife. So, and I cook a lot of shrimp. So, <laughs> and then this right here, we like deviled eggs in my house. And, um, it's a great snack, and for so long I couldn't find one of these little deviled egg containers, but I can make a whole dozen um, deviled eggs and put them with a lid on it now in my refrigerator. My kids can go get a snack whenever they want to, and it's a great way for me to use fre my fresh herbs that I'm, I grow all the time. So deviled eggs are um, great, and you can get that at Walmart, I think, for about $4. So love it. And then this is a big container for flour. You can, obviously, you can use it for anything you want to, but um, a five-pound bag of flour does great in a large container like this, and the little uh, sides, the little flaps kind of flip up so I don't break my nails whenever I'm trying to get in and out of my canisters. So I really like the little flip-up sides, and I think I got that at Bed Bath & Beyond using the 20% off coupon. So I keep a couple of those from, for my different flowers, and I also like to keep a little strainer in there, um, so I can just, um, if I need to just strain out like a cup of flour, it's good to go. It's already in there. And something that I use all the time, probably at least once a day, is an egg pan. And so when I notice that those start to get um, a little bit sticky, the non-stick surface has started to wear away, I buy another one. So right now I have three that aren't, you know, perfect, and they're not like brand new, but they're still very usable, and like I said, I use them all the time. The ones that I actually prefer to use have a metal handle that I can stick in the oven as well, in case I just want to make a small, you know, like frittata or something for maybe just my husband and I while the kids are at school or something. A good non-stick egg pan is just, I think, a very essential item. And then, of course, a meat tenderizer. I use this a lot, especially since I don't have a food processor. I find myself putting things in bags and hitting it a lot to get it as coarse as I need it. So I use my meat tenderizer a lot. And then tongs. Tongs are real important. Um, you can find these in all different kind of price ranges. I prefer the ones that have a locking handle. The ones that have the little, uh, I guess, square wire on it, they tend to fall down while I'm trying to cook, and it just makes it very hard to use. So whenever I'm cooking, I can just push it in, and then I can use it, and then when I need to store it away, I just pull it out so it closes up and stays locked. So it's a lot easier to use than the one with the little metal thing on there, but that's a very inexpensive item. It's like, a, I don't know, I think they're like a dollar fifty or something. So if, better have one than none. So if you see one of those and you don't have one, pick it up. They're real nice to have around. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to um, answer them for you. If you have any suggestions of something that you really like using that maybe I have left out, maybe I forgot about it, please leave that so all the other viewers can see it too. Thanks so much for watching, and y'all have a beautiful day.